really two major misconceptions, and I'm just going to share with you briefly about each of those. First, I really thought that Christianity was for people who were stupid. I thought that Christianity was for people who didn't think hard enough. Um, Actually, the first Bible that I ever had, I was challenged to read through it by someone, and as I did, I would uh, cross things out and add things. I came over time to think that I was dead wrong in my assumption that Christianity had to be anti-intellectual. I don't want you to take my word for that. I want you to go out and look into it um, yourself. That's what I did. Today, actually, back in Oxford, where I live and teach, Professor Brian Leftow is giving his first lecture of the year in his series on the existence of God. Leftow is the head professor in philosophy of religion at Oxford, and and each week in that series, he'll make a rigorous defense of a different argument for God's existence. Now, I wish I had time to talk to you about each one of those arguments now. I don't feel free to bring that up in the Q&A if you want. Before Leftow held the head post at Oxford in philosophy of religion, it was held by a man named Professor Richard Swinburne. Swinburne is probably the most influential British philosopher of religion of the last 60 years um, or so. And for me, at least, that forced me to the position where I had to say it has to be possible to be fully committed to intellectual rigor and also to be a fully committed Christian. I think I was wrong that Christianity is for people who don't think hard enough. I also think I was wrong about a second misconception I had about Christianity. And this one was really about the central message of the Christian faith. To me, Christianity was just a bunch of outdated rules. It was like those 613 laws that Ravi mentioned. And for me, they were really just like some of the crazy old laws that are still on American law books, technically, but they're now irrelevant and out of date and no one would think that they had any meaning. I found a couple of those laws as I was putting this together. So apparently, in Baltimore, it's illegal to take a lion to the movies. And it's pretty disturbing to think that at some point someone felt the need to make that law. And in Oklahoma, this is my favorite one, it's illegal to have a sleeping donkey in your bathtub after 7 p.m. Why anyone would think that would be okay before 7 p.m., no idea. But I used to think of Christianity a bit like this, a load of weird, out-of-date, impossible-to-follow rules. But when I began to look deeper during my first year of college, what I found was that the meaning of Christianity was completely different from what I thought it was. And I can remember thinking to myself, why didn't someone tell me about this sooner? If someone had told me what this was really about, I would have signed up ages ago. And what I found was that Christianity isn't primarily about rules, it's primarily about relationships. And there's one story that Jesus told, which especially helped me to see this. It's a story about a son Some of you will know it. It's a son who breaks every rule. He demands his inheritance early from his father. Then he abandons his family. Then he wastes what his father had worked his whole life to provide on wild living and meaningless life. Eventually, the son hits rock bottom. He decides to return home and to beg his father for a job. Now, the son would have known that in that ancient Jewish culture, If a son lost his inheritance and then returned to his village, what was supposed to happen was that the whole village would gather around him and shout, he has been cut off from his people. That's what was supposed to happen to this son. Instead, at the mere sight of the son, when the father sees the son still far off in the distance, the father takes off running, like an embarrassing fool, and he throws his arms around his son, and he kisses him, and he welcomes him home. Now, I'm sure that the father in this story wasn't pleased about the rules that had been broken. I'm sure he took that seriously. But the father's love for his son and his desire for relationship completely overshadowed everything else. The son simply says, I was wrong, And I'm sorry. 
But before he can even get the words out of his mouth, the father throws his arms around him and squeezes him tight. He embraces him just as he is. And then to show the son just how committed he is to having him home again, he puts the best robe around his shoulders. He puts the family ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. And then he goes and he kills his best animal and he throws a huge party for his son. So often in this life, you are going to be asked to believe that your value as a human being depends on how well you adhere to other people's rule and how well you meet their expectations, that you're only worth getting excited about if you've been impressive or successful or beautiful. Christianity says otherwise. Christianity says that the best forms of love are not about deserving. They're not about what we earn or merit or accomplish. They are simply about being a child. The son in this story, he broke every rule, but he was a son. He was family, and that was more than enough. And Jesus told that story as a picture of God's love for us, love that is unconditional, love that cannot be earned by following the rules, love that cannot be lost by breaking the rules. And so as a Christian, you can stop competing to be loved and just enjoy it. If someone asked me to sum up my whole experience of the Christian life in one sentence, that might be it. You could stop competing to be loved, and I could just start enjoying it. Look, I hope every one of you is tremendously successful here in college and beyond. I hope you get high GPAs and scholarships and championships and promotions at work and all of that good stuff. But most of all, I hope you will know that you are unconditionally loved by God and invited into relationship with him. And I hope that that will be the most important truth about who you are as a human person. That what will define you as a human will be the only thing about you that can never change. The only thing about you that can never change. That you are unconditionally loved by God and invited into relationship with him. Thank you.